Hey, welcome to Long Distance Sisters. I'm Tori. I'm McKenna. And I'm Serena. Come chat with us while we're far apart. Okay, let's get started. Hey, everybody. Thank you for coming to listen to this episode today. I hope it is a topic you're interested in because I know I was listening to podcasts similar to this or kind of what I hope the podcast would be before my trip to Guatemala um, where I went by myself. And yes, I have been with my partner for over four and a half years, but he stayed home and I went by myself. You don't have to be single to go on a solo trip. And I did do a solo trip earlier this summer to Clearwater, but I was ready ready to go international. I'd flown internationally before with layovers and everything. So I just felt ready to make the jump and go to Guatemala. All right. So I did make a vlog for this, which I hope to release about the same time we release this podcast. So I will leave a link to my YouTube channel down below that will also have a video of the clear water trip. And then I hope to kind of like go into more logistics on this. Like obviously I'll still share everything I did, but also, I don't know, just get into some details that I know I was nervous about and I know I wanted to make note of so you guys can like know where to go when you land or like how much souvenirs generally cost, stuff like that. So yeah, I guess we'll start with like what I kind of did before the trip. I had a long list of my phone of stuff to do. Um, So some things you want to do before any trip, really. Go on to your, like, government's website page. So for me, U.S. government, looking at different, like, travel restrictions or anything. And if there are any warnings for the country you want to go to. For Guatemala, it was, like, level three reconsidered travel. But when I went to read the descriptions, it was kind of, like, for certain departments of Guatemala. Um, which are kind of like their version of territory, states, that kind of thing. So the where I wanted to go, which was Flores and Tikal in the Department of Paten. Um, sorry if I mispronounced anything on this episode as well. But there weren't any res- like restrictions or warnings about those places. Um, and I do want to say that this trip was inspired by Roy Hornsby. He goes by Oyby, O-Y-B-Y on YouTube and his brother and their friend Dennis and their friend Lilu who did a Guatemala trip earlier this year so I did like the second kind of the second leg of the trip obviously I put my own kind of spin on it stayed different places did a few different things and obviously I was by myself as a woman but yeah so checking safety is very important checking the charging ports for that country in Guatemala, they use the same kind of ports we use here in the U.S., so I didn't have to make, bring any kind of outlet adapter. Um, check to see if you need a visa, at least as of recording this in like mid-August, or well, I went on my trip mid-August. You did not need any kind of visa to visit Guatemala from the U.S. I made sure I had my pa- photocopy of my passport, So I could have that and my passport like in separate places in case anything somehow got taken. taken. Um, I did feel really safe in the areas I was in, but you never know, just to be sure, just to be safe. How I was going to exchange money, which I ended up using an ATM, which I will talk about later, Uh, especially because it was so last minute. I didn't do like a request through a bank or anything which I feel like would have cost a little more, maybe a little less. It really depends on the bank and I think maybe the currency you want to exchange to as well because they use Guatemalan Quetzales there. Let any cards know about any travel plans. I know not all cards these days or companies these days like ask you to or have like a place for you to do that. They'll just kind of like verify with you as you purchased. So one of my cards, I like set up my travel plan with them, just like do like I'm going to be in Guatemala this day through this day on their website. And then like that was it. Um, And then my other one didn't. But when I booked my hotels using that card like a week earlier, 
it was like, hey, was this you? And I was like, yep. And then it never asked me while I was in Guatemala. And then speaking of like texts and stuff, I thankfully have a phone plan where I've unlimited international data and texting that came in clutch. Let me tell you, in clutch. And some apps that I had downloaded specifically for the trip. I downloaded the Hostel World app, but I didn't end up using it. But I think next time I would try to use it to like maybe chat with people beforehand who are staying at the same hostel as me. And then Aussie Travel Safety app. The only safety warnings for my trip were one, that it was like the rainy season, the wet season. And two, that their presidential election was on the Sunday that I was going to be there. Which speaking of that, they... At least where I was, I was in Flores all day on on Saturday. They didn't sell any alcohol because of the election. And so I didn't have any, I mean, I didn't go there to like drink and party and have a good time, but well, have a good time like that. I still had a great time and that was my intention, but I had like a drink Sunday night, but their election had already happened by that point. But yeah, I think it's really interesting how they stopped the sale of alcohol and leading up to the election. That was kind of neat. I did get a new backpack, which I think is something I'll just use for all my trips because it could be helpful no matter where you go in the world. I got an anti-theft backpack, which basically just means that there's like a pocket on the back side of it. So it's always against your lower back when you're wearing it. So that came in good use. I will link the one I used down below because it fit the, I flew Frontier. Um, it fit the frontier like size requirements even when it was pretty stuff especially at the end of my trip but still fit plenty of stuff all that I needed and it was comfy to wear too I think the brand is Matein M-A-T-E-I-N um, and I just ordered it off Amazon see what the weather is gonna be like so obviously it was the rainy season thankfully I didn't get rained on but yeah that's also why I didn't I originally was like, oh, I'm going to go out to Guatemala and do like the first part uh, or at least some of the first part of the trip that Uibi did, um, which was like Volcanaca Tenango. And then I saw it was the wet season when I was going to be going. And that meant that you can't, you're not really, there's not the best chance that you're going to see Volcan Fuego erupting next to it. So I was like, I'd rather save that experience for a time when I'm much more likely to have that view. So yeah, and that can also be like, oh, I got to get a raincoat. If you're going to do a lot of walking around, especially in the rain, I feel like you might be prone to blisters, especially if you're wearing new shoes. So bringing band-aids, antiseptic wipes, that's good. Ziploc bags for like the shoes, my shower shoes, which I would also like, where is my rain shoes, I guess, or wear if, if my sneakers got wet from the rain this is making my hair look gross but it's not like some idea of what you're gonna do and transportation have that um I had protein bars I had a charging pack that I never ended up using mine's like Mr. Bat like B-A-T-T and it holds it can charge my phone like two two and a half times fully so it's really great and has two charging ports so if you're with someone that's also great um, I brought a padlock for my hostel locker, and I could have also used it on my backpack. It did fit. That was my one padlock that of my two padlocks that I have that fit in the zipper, so I can like zip one or lock one um, pocket up. You also want to look into like the clothing culture where you're going. So in Guatemala, they don't wear a lot of like short shorts or anything or show. A lot of skin, especially of the legs. It is different in like Tikal and like on the actual island of Flores. But yeah, you just want to be respectful of the culture. So especially on travel days and when I was going to be like, like I landed in Flores at night. So I wanted to make sure that like I wouldn't stand out too much as a tourist and like, I don't know, have people look at me the wrong way. So I wore like leggings and a t-shirt for flying. My phone bracelet. So like you loop it around your phone, like where the speakers are at the bottom. Um, and you just wear it around your wrist. That may, that'll make it a lot harder for like someone to snatch your phone out of your hand. Um, so they're like less likely to, to try. Um, no one tried that. I didn't even see anyone try it where I was. 
So for Frontier, I have the All You Can Fly Pass. And for international trips, you can only book your flights 10 days out. So I booked 10 days out from my flying home day. Um, And once that was booked, I booked my flight from Guatemala. So that was Atlanta to Guatemala City. And then once that was booked, I um, on Expedia, because I found the best prices on there, um, not sponsored by anything on this podcast, booked my flight from Guatemala City to Flores and like that round trip. And then I booked my places I was going to stay. Sometimes you have to um, book places through WhatsApp, or you can also do email for sometimes, but I um, booked my hostel in Flores, which is Hostel Macarena on hostelworld.com. And then I booked Jungle Lodge T Call um, over WhatsApp um, and scheduled my like guided tour and my shuttle through there as well. And you also want to look into like customs info, what can they go into the country and like come into the US or wherever you live after. Um, so like no produce or anything that kind of stuff but yeah so just keep that in mind for like souvenirs or something like you can't bring home like a bunch of fresh mango or whatever okay I also have like a tile tracker that if it if I didn't find out the night before that I was almost out of battery because I didn't check the night before I would have packed it and like maybe kept it in my backpack or something um so I would always be able to tell where it is using my phone I made sure I had plain snacks and protein bars, like I already said. I used a waterproof foam pouch while I was there for like when I was sitting in the lake or in the pool. And in case it rained, like that would have come in clutch and it did come in clutch. I definitely like that. And it had like a strap too that was removable and I actually used that strap um, on my water bottle and to call to carry around my water bottle. So it wouldn't always have to be in my hand. I could have the my hands free if I needed to. Um, which was really nice. And I use SeaWag, S-E-A-W-A-G. And I tested that out the night before. I like put it in a bowl of water for like five hours and the inside was dry. So I was like, okay, I can do this. I didn't look into this because I was just focused on other things. But looking into Facebook groups of other solo travelers, see if anyone's going to be in the same area as you at the same time that you are. Or just like for general tips too. Let me see. I also had a Ziploc bag for money in case it rained. So the money wouldn't like crumple up into pieces. Screenshot all my hotel info and my flight info. Pack any medications you may need. Hairbrush. Took a picture of the notes I had on my laptop. Saved um, card numbers like for credit and debit cards on my phone. Oh, and then also really important, uh, at least I think it's really important, the STEP program, which is like some kind of smart traveler enrollment program. I think that's, or safe traveler enrollment program. That's just like on the U.S. government's website and you tell them where you're going, arrival and departure dates, and you like select the consulate that's nearest to you. There's only one in Guatemala and Guatemala City. So if they're like, hey, you, she didn't leave this country, they could try to contact you. And if you don't respond to them, they can reach out to people and they will, I guess, do something to help come find you and figure out what happened to you if you don't make it out of the country for whatever reason. And then I also like broke down costs for everything and how much like cash I might need for different things so I always can manage my money and be like okay I have like this much left for souvenirs or like another treat or something um because I have to have this much cash to pay the other half of my hotel and for my tickets to the con to tour and to like tip people which also look up the tipping culture of wherever you are going. I think there's something like tippingaroundtheworld.com or something like that. So for Guatemala, um, it's not really customary to tip like at restaurants and stuff. Although sometimes there is an included like 10% service charge. I mean, with more tourists, they're kind of expecting tipping more. But tipping, it's not really a thing there to tip. And if that 10% service charge is included, then like, that's not, and that's not every restaurant. I did notice it maybe like half or a little more than half. So just be aware of that. I didn't 
experience taxes on anything except for a hotel, which I already knew like the full price taxes included like shortly after booking. But yeah, like activities and they have a tax and like food, like sometimes would have the 10% service charge, sometimes wouldn't. So um, I really helped like kind of hone down how much I spent that way, which by the way, with what I spent, including ATM fees and stuff, it was about 650, something like that, US dollars. But that would have been 266 more dollars if I didn't have the Frontier All You Can Fly Pass because that made my round trip airfare $102 and some change. So that was very nice. I was very glad to have that gifted to me by my partner. But yeah, I also wrote down some notes that were like, but what time I had to leave, what time uh, the two possible trains I could take to the airport were, where the ATM was when I arrived in Guatemala City at the airport, and like, just some basics like that. Also on tipping, how did I get away from that? So you tip like tour guides. Um, that is like 10% tip for tour guides is pretty standard. I also tip my shuttle driver. And then I also... At the bottom, I wrote down like some souvenir ideas if I had room for them, which I had room for the ones that I could find. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to pull up some pictures and kind of talk through my trip. Still add some logistics stuff. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so we have the flight there. Like I said, I flew to Frontier. Thankfully, I have PS TSA pre-check. So... I got there maybe to the airport a little less than an hour and a half before my flight. And I had to like buy a new phone case because my phone case didn't get here in time. So I bought that at the airport on the way to my gate. I ate a little snack before boarding the plane. Um, it was about a three and a half hour plane ride. So not bad at all. And then once you get to Guatemala City and you have to like go through customs and everything, You'll see these big posters with like QR codes. If you have international data, which don't forget to turn on data roaming. If you have international data, then definitely scan the QR code and you'll fill out your customs form. If not, um, they have computers available there and some sheets of paper um, for you to fill out your customs form. And if you fill that out online on one of your, their computers or your phone, take a picture or a screenshot of the QR code, which they'll show you then. They'll also email it to you. Definitely keep that email for when you're on your way out. Then you like go through the customs line, like show them your passport and stuff. Once you are through customs and everything, and you're like exiting kind of the airport and you see a bunch of like car rental, uh, like little stands, kiosks, you can go to either side and you'll find yourself outside you want to cross the little like passenger drop off pickup kind of roadway and go into that parking deck right on the other side go up to level three and then that's where you'll find like the entrance to the airport so i checked in for tag airlines there flying domestic it's either tag airlines or avianca or avianca however you say it um, Avianca is up front to the right. Tag Airlines is all the way back to the, to the left. Um, so I went to Tag Airlines and got my ticket and everything. And yeah, just went through domestic security super quick. You can take like regular sized, like full on water bottles and stuff through security there, which is great. Although I did like, you're not supposed to like, don't fly with aerosols. Like if you want dry shampoo, I use, I get the Trader Joe's dry shampoo because that's like powder for traveling. You could also use like loose translucent powder. But yeah, you're not supposed to take aerosols on planes. And they did have like a bin of aerosol containers at that security that I saw they had like taken from people. Yeah, that security went by so fast. Um, I had a really long layover. I did ask about going standby on their earlier flight and they're like, oh, it's full, but we'll see. I didn't hear from that person again, so I'm guessing it, everyone showed up for it. So I did have a long layover, but I was already expecting it. I had no expectations of getting on the earlier flight. My only goal for that Friday 
was just getting to Flores. So yeah, once I got on SAG Airlines, which for that place, it's like you board the domestic flights on tarmac, um, which I had done before. But for some people, it's a new experience. But yeah, and they gave you like a complimentary drink, which sometimes it'll just be like soda or water that you have to choose from. Um, My flight was actually, my plane was really small. It was like the A seat, the aisle, the B and C seats. Like it was so tiny. Um, On the way back, it had like one extra seat per row. But yeah, it was a short, easy flight. We were in the air for like 40 minutes, maybe. And since it was dark when we landed, I think like there were no tuk-tuks at, at the airport because of that. So I like just approached a taxi driver and then told him where I was staying. So we, I like got in the car and then he stood outside waiting. So I was like, okay, it must be like a shared taxi kind of situation. And um, two British girls and one other girl who I don't know where she was from, they got in the car and we all went to the island of Flores. So, and that was like 25 quetzales for each of us. Um, so not bad. The current, ex- the exchange rate when I went there was like one US dollar to one US dollar, yeah, to 7.85 Guatemalan quetzales. So yeah, pretty inexpensive taxi ride, like under $4 which was nice. And it was like maybe 15, 20 minutes. I don't really know. I didn't really keep track. But yeah, checked into Hostel Macarena. They had vegan friendly tacos. So I just ordered the vegetarian tacos. And they were like the protein in that was falafel, which I thought was interesting. Apparently falafel was kind of a common protein option from what I heard other, another vegetarian tell me um, they saw like throughout Guatemala. My hostel room was, there were six bunk beds. It was mixed gender. I think the AC came on at like 9 p.m. I want to say it runs from 9 to 9. There are privacy curtains. Everyone got their own locker. The padlock works with the locker. You get a key that's also for your locker, but the reviews I read online said that the key also worked with other lockers. It was about $20 a night. And there's breakfast included, but the breakfast is kind of small. I don't have trouble sleeping on like uncomfortable mattresses. So I think the mattress there was fine. For other people though, I think feel like it might be uncomfortable. So just keep that in mind, I guess. But yeah, it's a it was a very like quiet hostel. I mean, they had music playing because they like had a bar and stuff. But yeah, it wasn't like the the social hostel on the island. Um, it's Los Amigos. But yeah, I just wanted like a quieter place to rest. But yeah, privacy curtains. Each bed had like a like little nightstand kind of rack with a light um, and an outlet. So I thought that was great. And yeah, it wasn't a bad place to stay. When I like filled out all my different ratings and stuff on Hostel World, it came out to like an 8.6, which I think is fair. Like the toilets kind of smelled funky, but other than that, it was pretty, it was a clean place to stay. It was quiet. The staff was great. They were super helpful with all my questions. Like, where can I buy coffee beans? Or like, where can I get a boat taxi? Yeah, so it was nice for, but if you like want that social atmosphere, you'll have to pay a few more dollars for Los Amigos and then pay a few more dollars to get a room with AC. So just something to keep in mind. Los Amigos was a very short walk. I mean, everything on the island is a short walk away from no matter where you are on the island. Um, So you could always like go to Los Amigos, have some fun, and then come back to your cheaper, quieter hostel. So yeah, that is definitely something to keep in mind. Oh, also they had like hot water at this hostel. Um, Towels were an extra charge though. It said online that towels were included. They were not. Yeah, so the first morning I woke up, had the breakfast kind of small. It said it came, it was like seasonal fruit, uh, honey granola, which I am a vegan that eats honey. I don't usually eat it in the US, but when I'm traveling and like that is my option, I'm not going to hesitate to have it. Um, And I also feel like the honey there would probably be better source than it might be here in the US. But again, I don't. No, I didn't ask the question, but 
Yeah. And then it said peanut butter was what it came with, but it came with yogurt. So I had to send it back because the like sign that said what they had did not mention yogurt. So that's great. But I mean, it was very small. Filled me for a, a, uh, a while though, but I also don't really get hungry when I'm traveling because I'm so focused on other stuff, which is weird because it's like, there's so many great foods I want to try. But yeah, so I had that and then I went to Los Amigos for an 8 to 9.15 yoga class, which started, ended up starting around 8.15 because the instructor <laughs> slept in a little. And then it wasn't over until like 9.45. It was literally me and one other American and yeah, just like the two instructors um, who were from Argentina. They were like traveling the world for a year and they were spending a month there teaching yoga for this hostel so that was cool it was very great it was great to have such a nice stretch and do all that breathing work right after like a day of flying okay and then I walked right across the bridge to this little mall oh my gosh I didn't even mention about the ATM at the airport the ATM at the airport is around where like everyone's kind of filling out their customs forms you'll see this like currency exchange counter but you'll want to look for the 5b atm to the left of it um the 5b atms are the only ones that will take like foreign credit debit cards so like ones from america um you can only take out 2000 quetzalos at a time um you can't even do like another transaction after that at least from that same atm but yeah, that brings me to the next day when I walked across the bridge, went to the mall right on the left there. On the first floor, they had a little, like in that opening plaza that you first come across, there's a door with 5B on it. Um, It's like a yellow and black sign. So it's kind of hard to miss if you are looking for it um, on a little door. So you open that door and it's just a small room with the ATM. Um, so you can take out more cash there. You do need cash to pay for your Tikal entrance passes. They recommend you get those before you actually head to Tikal because not every shuttle stops, shuttle or bus stops at the entrance to the park where you can also buy tickets. Um, so you have to go to like a bank to purchase tickets and you do need cash in order to do so. They won't take any kind of foreign card. And so the bank to purchase where you can purchase those is a uh, ban your rural ban rural and it's literally like you make a u-turn from the plaza to like the entrance of the mall kind of it's like an open air mall so on that first floor kind of just inside is the bank and there's like a security guard you have to say like hey, I have cash to call tickets and for to call you need a day pass for however many days you're going and then unless you like enter the park apparently after 3 p.m then you can still use that pass the next day and then if you're doing a sunrise or sunset tour you do, do need to pay for a sunrise or sunset pass respectively and you need to make sure you have a guide in or so you can be in the parks that late be in the park that late which park hours are from 6 a.m to 6 p.m so just after sunrise to just before sunset and which is I mean for people's safety that's why they ask you to have a guy because they don't want you in the jungle in the dark by yourself um especially as a tourist who might not be as familiar with the Central American jungle and its wildlife and stuff they have had people even with guides but like from a guy in Guatemala City they once had that like the Guatemala City guide and um, I think like a couple get lost in the jungle there for two days because they didn't know their way around and they were there after dark. So yeah, so you go there. It was, it's 150 quetzalis for a day pass, 100 for sunset pass, 100 for sunrise pass, um, which I just got the day pass and the sunset pass. Head back across the bridge, drop those passes off at my Hostel asked where I could get a boat taxi, which if you look on a map of Flores, you might see a little restaurant called Maple and Totino um, on the north end of the island. You go to the end of that short little street. There are water or water taxis, boat taxis, whatever you want to call them, waiting there. And so I took one, um, was 200 Katsales round trip 
great driver with Antonio. He was awesome. He took some great pictures for me. But yeah, I went to Arcus, which is an animal rescue center. It has received funds from many international organizations. So I know that they are doing a great job. Um, they've even, even received funds from like Disney conservation and stuff. Um, so I saw a lot of different like jungle cats there. So here the picture is kind of blurry, but um, these were jaguarundi. They're kind of like the size, uh, maybe slightly larger, slightly larger than domestic house cats. Um, they were freaking adorable. I loved these two. There's one kind of like inside the little shelter, and then obviously the one napping. They were adorable. So yeah, so them, Puma, this is an ocelot. Um, man, it's so tiny. Why is it so tiny? But yeah, there was also an ocelot in like the shelter in the back, but that ocelot seemed to be having a little sassy day. So there were spider monkeys, a bunch of spider monkeys, and a lot of these animals were rescued from wildlife trafficking, um, which they do a great job educating people about. They do have signs in English as well as Spanish. More science in Spanish, obviously. But yeah. Spider monkeys. And the animals that you see are non-releasable animals. They keep animals that are still eligible for re release after their rehabilitation in an area out of public view. So these are really great like ambassadors kind of for their species. Here there is a keel build toucan and a I want to say a red, no, this was a yellow-headed parrot. Um, there's also a red-fronted parrot you'll see a lot. I saw quite a bit of in T-Call. This was on the way back, so Antonia took that picture for me. Definitely a great picture, like possibly my favorite one with me in it from my trip. So you'll see Flores to the left there. Very cooling boat ride. And I kind of think of the climate there as similar to Central Florida. Um, except for when I was in like the super dense part to the jungle and it just got like super humid and I was just like, I'll sweat, 100% sweat. Yeah, I was like in the Central American jungle. So like, what do you expect? So I was going to do a sunset boat tour through Los Amigos that was from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. And at Arcus, I spent like a little over an hour there. Um, and I exchanged like WhatsApps, WhatsApp information with Antonio so I can let him know when I was finished. So I just kind of paid everything up front and he said like, don't worry, we can like WhatsApp. So we did. So he was fantastic. But yeah, that they didn't have enough people sign up for the Sunset Boat Tour, maybe possibly because they weren't allowed to sell alcohol for it. I don't really know. I wasn't going to drink much there. I was just there to have like they would take us to like a swim spot and being around other people I would feel comfortable swimming in that lake because there are crocodiles <laughs> and I'm like afraid of them um but with other people I was like okay that would be fine to go swimming and stuff and like paddle boards and everything and they bring like your dinner out on the boat and stuff but since that was canceled I was like I still want to get in the water a little so I put my phone on my little waterproof pouch um, and I went to the one swim spot on the island, which is on the northwest side. Um, I saw it on the map on the wall in Los Amigos because some things online will say there's nowhere to swim on the island, but there is this swim spot that I just I just sat on the stairs that descended into the water. Um, there were quite a number of people I did see swimming around there. So yeah, that was nice to kind of like cool off. But after that, I did some souvenir shopping and then... I showered. I didn't wash my hair while I was there. I'm just going to put that out there now because I was only there for two full days. So I was like, I'm going to shower when I wash my hair when I get home from the airport, no matter what. And I didn't, thankfully, I didn't need dry shampoo the first day, but partway through the second day. Yes. The jungle day. Yes. But I went to San Telmo. They do have some vegan options for like food and stuff, but I've heard their food is like meh, so so. So I just got like, this nar nar naranjada, if that's how you say it, drink, which is like an orange cooler or orange cordial, if you've ever had those. It's kind of like between a Capri Sun and a juice, I would say. Maybe a little closer to the juice. It was really good. And I saw it all over the place there. So I kind of watched 
the sky's attempt at a sunset. Good sunsets and sunrises are also not guaranteed during the wet season. So I didn't have like a great one, but it was still a really pretty view up there um, from their terrace part. The terrace entrance is to is on the outside to the left of that main door, but like they'll help you out inside if you walk in there. So yeah, I had that. And then I went to Los Amigos for dinner where I had some curry, which had plantains in it. That was really good. Yeah, like chickpeas and stuff. And then I got this like half liter kombucha. They gave me the freaking biggest cup. (laughs) I should have only gotten the small, but I mean, it was like 25 kitsales for the large and 15 for the small. So I was like, I'll just get the large. And it was big. It was good, though. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even say where I went for lunch. Well, anyway, Los Amigos. Some people say, like, oh, it's a little pricier. But they give you such a larger portion than anywhere else. And it's, like, only ever so slightly more expensive. Like, 10 quetzales more than... Less than 10 quetzales more than um my lunch meal. And the drinks cost, the kombuchas I got at breakfast and di- or at lunch and dinner cost the same, but my dinner one was way larger. It actually cost more at lunch. But anyway, um, so Los Amigos, I, the food was really good. So I definitely would recommend eating there. They did have this like vegan protein smoothie bowl that I was also interested in getting. And I also ordered a box lunch there which came with like they said they could make it vegan which I think it already was vegan as is um and they just labeled it as the vegetarian lunch box so that was really good and I actually ordered that then to be like my lunch when I had my layover at the Guama City airport on the way back like the La Aurora airport and then it also came with like an apple and a bag of like mixed nuts which there was also like some like dried I think they call it hasa in there, H-A-S-A. Um, that was really good. That was the tastiest part. Tastiest part. Um, and there are also like some raisins in there. So it was like a really filling snack. Some of that for like when I was feeling snacky. Not so I would have more than just like my protein bars. And I just kind of like packed my bag when I got back to my hostel and like organized my money, organized my stuff so I didn't have to like do as much in the morning or do much later when there are other people maybe trying to sleep and stuff. Um, and I watched some of the movie The Age of Adeline. I also read some of To Kill a Mockingbird on this trip. That was like the book I brought because it was kind of like small and compact. But for lunch that first day, I did go to restaurant Maracuya. Maracuya is Spanish for passion fruit. So I got their passion fruit kombucha. And... The dish I got was one of their vegan bowls. It was like the chompy or something. It was supposed to come with a tamalito, which is like a tamale, but it, that never came out. They spoke no English. So thankfully, I actually ran into the guy who was like the American from yoga that morning there. So we had lunch together and he spoke some Spanish. But with him and Google Translate, I figured out how to order. So yeah. Um, that food was like good. It was all right. It was 68 quetzales for the food and 30 for the kombucha. Um, and at Los Amigos, I think it was 70 for the food and 25 for the kombucha. So yeah, Los Amigos was definitely a better deal. But Maracuya was a very pretty place um, with a gorgeous view. So it'd be a great place to go if it's, I don't think it's open for sunrise because it's on the east side of the island. Um, but it is a beautiful location and their kombucha was really good but yeah that was kind of my day in Florida it's very chill very relaxed very relaxing obviously for me being an animal person love that there was some wildlife in there yeah and this is just like kind of what the a little glimpse of what the town of Flores looks like very colorful very pretty yeah fun I felt safe it was all good Thanks for listening to this week's Long Distance Sisters. Be sure to subscribe for more episodes and leave a good review. And check out the video version on our YouTube channel. You can find all of our other social media information in the description. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.